Hello Lizzie here and today we're going to talk about Janet and Janet is a fabulous little pouch that you can attach around your waistline to take those bits and pieces in that you desperately need. Now I developed this especially for me <laughs> because sometimes I carry my mobile phone with me everywhere and sometimes I don't wear jeans or trousers that have pockets or actually no pockets at all. So I'm always stuck as to what I do with my mobile phone. I thought, you know what, I need to create a, a pouch that I can wear, um, that I can pop my mobile phone in. So it does take a fairly big phone. But actually, it's also part of a sort of a travel range that we've got for this particular month with the three patterns. And you can see behind me, we've got a, a little travel wallet here and we've got a backpack as well. So it's all part of the same set, same fabric. Um, so this is a really easy make. It might look complicated because we've got the zip going on at the front. Um, it, it's lovely because it all opens up beautifully. You've got the lining inside. You can see it's quite spacious. Um, you know, obviously you can fussy cut as well. I fussy cut, so we've got the butterfly on the back. Depends on your fabric. Um, a nice contrasting zip. Little pieces, little sort of tabs to put on the sides to take your webbing. And of course, you could make your own straps out of your fabric if you want to but um, I chose webbing and this time we've got a plastic buckle so you just push these together and that just undoes she says very easily hold on let's get my, let's get my tans in the right place oh, there <laughs> practice makes perfect so it has a little buckle there well actually it's very good nobody's going to steal it off you are they <laughs> plus it needs a little bit of working anyway and it's got a slider as well so um, I've made it so it's, it's quite big actually um, but you can make it smaller if you want to by using the slider or cut a smaller piece of webbing if it's for a child but certainly it's a nice little size it's not massive not massive at all but it's going to be a great little pouch for you to make to, to sort of sling around you especially in the summertime maybe and um, click sort of have all your little bits and pieces in there that you want to sort of look after I'll pop that to the side there so we've got all the pattern pieces so you just go to my website lizzycurtis.com and download the pattern that's there for you um, I've cut all the pattern pieces out you don't need to measure anything except for your webbing that's the only thing on the zip you've got to measure but everything else there's pattern pieces there so just cut those out and use them it's so so easy you don't need to know what the measurements are so we've got a piece for the top and I've already cut out little notches in the middle to help me later and you'll see how that works we've got the back piece let me hold it that way you can see and um, that's quite a distinct shape and I'm, there is a reason why I'm telling you this so that's the back piece the front piece there we go you can see now it's a little bit different in the shape it's sort of curved down here and it's sort of it's it it helps with the the movement if you like around the the shape of the the top part so that's the front so it's the front the back and the top then we have two little pieces for the tabs either side and then of course we've got our lining so the first thing you need to do is to actually attach the zip now on my zip I've got a 14 inch zip here um, but it which is far too long which is great because it means we can get that naughty little slider out of the way while we're stitching if, if that's a bit of a worry for you I've put safety pins either end so that means that um, I'm not going to uh, mistakenly take my slider right off so that's a good little tip for you if you want to put safety pins at the ends, I'm going to probably remove those fairly soon um, because I want to open my zip up at one point. So the first thing we're going to do is to actually attach the, the back to the um, top. So if you remember, that's our back piece. That is our top piece and we're going to join those together, right sides together. Now you'll notice that the top piece is wider than the back piece and that's intentional, okay? So let's find the centres. As I said, I put a notch there. So that's what I suggest you do. Um, if I show you on the side camera, we'll be able to see what that looks like. So you've got a notch here and you've got a notch there and the same with the the um, outside fabric as well if I hold it so hopefully you can just see there's a little notch there and there's a little notch at the top and I've just sort of married those up so it's right sides together you're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to go all the way along a little back stitch now I've got my zipper foot already attached to my machine but you'll want to use your regular foot and then you can change it for the zipper foot well, I'll probably do that in a little while so quarter inch seam allowance and 
and all the way across. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our top to our back. Now you could trim this back if you want to, and I think in the pattern I say that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to top stitch onto the top part. So it's not onto the back, it's onto the top part here. And I'm just going to flatten my seam, and you could get your iron on this to be perfectly honest. Flatten your seam out, so I want to show you that. So the seam is going towards the top, okay, not the back, and I'm going to top stitch that down. Now, like I said, you could, if you wanted to, you could um, trim some of that fabric back. Now, when I've made the original one, which is this one here, I made it out of canvas, which is super. Um, with this one, this is just quilting cotton, but I have put two layers of stabilizer on uh, on the cotton itself so it's it's with the canvas it had one layer of stabilizer no wadding with the cotton fabric i've put two layers of stabilizer on the back and that's a medium weight stabilizer so it's kind of firm but not too much so you can't handle so there's our top stitching done you can just about see that there i'll show you at the side you can see our top stitching uh, it's easier to see it on the on the white than the black and on the front that's what it looks like there you can just about see it so we've done the two pieces there and if you wanted to you could do the lining so shall we do that i'm asking you i'm going to do it anyway so again i have put my notches in so i know exactly where the middle is and i'm just going to run uh, across the, the lining, 14 inch seam allowance again, and you don't need to top stitch this, it doesn't need top stitching. So, but you could iron it, keep it neat. So, there's our back to our top, and it's the straight part of the top that you're stitching, and obviously the straight part of the back that you're stitching. Okay, so we'll just pop those to one side. So, now what we're going to do, we're going to actually stitch our zip in place. So, I'm just trimming my ends, and you'll find you have little triangles at each end. So, I've just trimmed those so it's a nice smooth curve. We're going to put our zip on the curved part. Now you may want to think about whether you're right-handed or left-handed. For instance, this zip is closed now and I'm a right-hander, so I'd want my slider to be on the left and pull across. I think that's probably how I would use it even. I sometimes use my left hand as well. So, But you can decide what, sli what side you want your slider on. Again, find the middle, so fold your zip in half and just give it a little nick and do this both sides because we're going to stitch both sides in so you might as well snip it at the same time okay so so there we are so there's the, there's the top so that's going to be the front here so I want my slider on the left hand side so I'm going to flip that over so it's right sides together so I'll show you on the side view in a second so I'll just get my centre notches lined up, there we go. So if we look at the side there, I know it's hard to see with black, but I think you'll be okay. Let's move all these other bits and pieces out of the way. <laughs> so there we go, have a clear view. So I've lined up my notches, so I know that's the centre of the zip and the centre of the front of the, of the top, okay? This, this is the top piece. So I know that my zip is going to go all the way along here and off the end of the zip, uh, sorry, off the end of the, the, the top there, okay? And if we flip it over this way, you'll see how that looks. So you'll see now how your, why this is um, longer, because we're going to start stitching on that piece there and a quarter inch in, so it works out really well. So I'll hold that there just for a moment so you can see. And because I've got my safety pin there, I can move my slider right out of the way. So, but just be careful still. <laughs> We don't want you to lose it. So look, my slider is now way out of the way. Let's see if we can catch the light and you can see how that looks. Looks great. Now, of course, you could clip all this. I better do it. I better do it. Be good. And of course, you could do your lining at the same time. OK, so you can stitch this in as I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to do my lining. OK, so it's done in two parts, if you like. 
So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to pop that under the machine. And of course you could clip that last little bit there, but I'm just going to get my foot in. There we go. Lovely. And just follow the lines. I'm going to take the clips out. I find it easier to have, if I've got a curve, I find it much easier if I've got a straight piece to put the straight piece on the curve rather than the other way around. And if I have it clipped to my piece already, I find it a hindrance. You might be different to me and, and there's no rules with this, but I like to, I work with my hands, I suppose. And so I just make my way around. This is such a lovely little make. Oh my goodness me. You can make loads of these and when we can do craft fairs, oh my goodness, you can have a whole stall of, of these little pouches. Wouldn't that be awesome? I think so anyway. So just come all the way around, right to the end. There you go. And that little extra bit that you'll have at the end of your top is perfect. In fact, let me show this to the to the side camera there. I want you to see what that looks like. If I bring the zip back, see how perfectly now that lines up with, with your stitching. So if you want to, you could take the, the zip, the um, safety pin out. If you haven't used one, you're not going to bother. But we want to top stitch this so it's beautiful. So I'm just going to fold this back. I also want to be mindful that I'm going to put the lining in. Now you could put the lining in before or you can put it in afterwards. If you top stitch and it's a long, long way away from your, your folded edge here on, on, the, on the zip, you're going to have difficulty putting your lining in. So you may want to bring your lining piece in, right sides together, line that all up, stitch it, flip it over and top stitch. Shall we do it that way? Might as well. Now I've said it. But it, so it depends. It depends how you want to put it in. So I'm just put right sides together. When I say right sides, if we look at the side camera here, this is obviously the wrong side of my pouch. That's the right side of my pouch. That's the right side. We had a look at that just a moment ago. So it's right sides together with my pouch. Right sides, right side. Difficult to see when it's a plain fabric but that would be my right side only because I've got that seam going along there. So actually it's quite easy to recognise. Now you might want to um, clip the edges of this together just to make sure that when you stitch um, you know that the pieces are going to be exactly matched up. You might be very confident and you won't need to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stitch from the other side. And the reason why I'm going to stitch from the other side is that I can follow my original stitching. OK. So just line them up as you did before. So let's get that lined up. And like I said, follow your original stitching. But you could, so you could do, as I said before, you could top stitch and then put the lining in or the other way around, whatever's easiest. So I've just gone on the inside of my stitching. So I haven't gone on top, I haven't, I haven't tried to be that pedantic. I'm just following that line, I'll show you when I'm done. So just follow that line round. Lovely. So I'll show you the side camera and you'll be able to see. So that second line of stitching, just inside, that's where I've stitched the lining. So if we look at it like that, you'll be able to see what that looks like. It's not always easy to see, but that's how it'll look. So that's the inside and that's the outside. So we could give that a little press actually, because when you when you sort of give it a press or a dry iron, 
um, it pushes the lining out of the way and I'll tell you another little tip as well is to bring the edges of your lining and your outer fabric together so if I lift that up you can see that those edges are meeting perfectly there we go and if you top stitch that with those edges lined up you'll find that it kind of pulls the lining away from the zip uh, which means you're not going to catch it well if you do it's very minimal and at the end of the day you're not going to see it. it's going to be inside the pouch so let's just give that a little iron I'll finger press it first um, because this is curves you might want to use your pink and shears to tr trim all that away so it sits nicely but I'm just going to finger press that and give that an iron I'll do the top first, the outside first, and then I'll do the lining. There we go. And like I say, because it's on the curve, let me turn that down a wee bit. Because it's on the curve, you need to sort of, it, it, you're, you're moving straight edges into curves, so you need to sort of, um, move it with the iron really you've got to sort of and I think the ironing really helps to to put it in the right place um, but certainly trimming it with your pink and shears absolutely will help so that's what it looks like now which is really quite neat so if I show you how that looks so as long as you haven't got any pleats or tucks going on there and you'll see that all of these edges meet beautifully do you see how they work so what we can do is we can put clips on here like I said before just to hold all those edges together. Let's do that. There we go, please do that. So now I'm going to top stitch. And it's done for neatness really, apart and keeping the fabric out of the way with the zip. So let's just pop that under the needle. So just make sure that lining is well out of the way. And this is really only the decorative top stitching that we're doing. Anything else is, is functional. Lovely. Really neat super inside as well lovely so I'm just going to trim my lining a little piece here just so it um, lines up these things do wriggle sometimes okay I think I'm, I'm happy with that it's a little bit out I think it's my cutting rather than anything else okay let's get rid of the clips so now what we're, we're ready to actually put the zip on the on the other side so this is our this so we've done our sort of back piece and our top <laughs> so that's how it's going to look i've got my slider on the right side well the left side but the right side for me and there's our lining so now we're going to put the the front piece on here so i'm going to actually open my zip up because it's going to make it easier for me to do that there we go. I'm going to keep my safety pin on this side. And if you want to, by all means, um, put some stitches across there as well, just to hold it in place. So let's open that up. There we go. That's, in fact, I'm going to open it up this way and put my safety pin on the other side. There we go. So I want this open. So if I open it up you'll be able to see it's two pieces now but I've still got my safety pin here just to hold it and now we'll find that a lot easier to stitch the front in you can try with it done up that's no problem so there's our front piece there we've got our notch so look for the notch on the zip especially now because we've actually snipped it so just clip those together and then trace it back so you're going to and like I said before, you know me, I'm going to undo this as soon as I've done it. 
but it's just I suppose if you get well, it's the starting off if you get the starting off in the right place then the rest of it will sit be sitting correctly um, and of course doing the notches really helps so um, because this is there's only a slight curve to this you could start from the slider end if you like if you like or you could start from this end I might as well what shall I do oh, I'm going to start from this end so I'm taking my slider right out of the way so it's the right side of the zip with the right side of your fabric so once again we're going to stitch the the front in with the zip and then we'll put the lining in and the great thing about this is if you've used here comes the clips <laughs> if you've used a, a different colored zip you know a sort of a you know I could have used a lime green or an orange something like that becomes quite a feature and then the plastic buckle that you're going to use I'm using a, a black plastic buckle with my black webbing but you could pick up the color of the zip with your plastic buckle and you can I'm, I'm using a metal slider but you can get plastic sliders wasn't sure whether that would be strong enough so I'm sticking to my metal one so there we are. <laughs> Let's do the zip up and then you'll see it better. But don't go off the end. There we go. So there, there we go. So that is the zip installed on the front. How easy was that? Easier with the zip open, okay? So now we need to stitch the lining in, so I'm gonna undo it. <laughs> and got my lining piece, so don't forget how that's going to be attached. So it's right side of your lining onto the right side of your outer fabric. Match up your notches. Notches are such a great thing. I think years ago when I was dressmaking, I used to, well, I didn't used to like doing notches because they're so fiddly, but I found it easier afterwards. You know, if you've cut your pattern out and then you're, uh, cutting notches in I find that much easier there's lots of things we don't do now that we did years ago now I'm going to follow my own advice which I started stitching and then I thought you know what I'm going to follow my own advice so that advice is that we're following the lines of the stitching on our stabilizer so we can see that it means that I'm not going to go over it so I'm just going to follow it just like we did before. I'm just going to go a millimetre inside the original stitching. Have you ever wondered what the Gold Club is all about? So many people message me, what is the Gold Club? Okay, Simply is my online sewing group, okay, mainly based on Facebook where we, we have a bit of a natter every day. We do Facebook lives and make all sorts of things. But if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see a join gold tab on the top there. And all that means is that you click on that yeah, and you buy it. So for five pounds, which in dollars is about $6.30, depending on exchange rates and times, um, you will get three patterns every month. I know, it's mad. If you look at the price of my patterns in the shop, generally they're now $4.99. The value of the Gold Club online membership at this point in time is just £5 a month. So you're getting the three free patterns every month and they're all made by me, designed for you. Easy, moderate, fairly difficult. Then we have the Facebook to back that up all as well, the Facebook group. So we have a wonderful time in there. We're all great friends. So if you want to join a great online sewing community, join Liz's Gold Club. I must admit my uh, seam allowances are a bit dodgy because I've still got my zipper foot on. <laughs> 
I'll, I think I might change it out in a minute. So I'm just going to undo that little bit of stitching that I did before just to make sure this sits right when I get to the other end. I'm sure it will, but let's just snip those away. I think I did a good back stitch on this. Hold on. There we go. There's only a couple of stitches, but I just they didn't want to go. So we're just following the lines that are already stitched. So let me show you that. And you'll see what I mean. So if I show you the side here, so the bottom line is where I stitched my bag front to the zip. The second line is where I stitched the lining and the lining is here, look. Okay, so that's stitched on. And of course, let me, if you stay there, let's just get this in the right place. <laughs> Turn this around. <laughs> oh dear. And then pop your lining in. Because don't forget, we top stitched that other piece. I'm going to, I'm going to iron that so it's it's nice and neat. There we go. So that's how it looks like now. Okay, and our lining, we've just stitched that in there. Okay, so I'm going to press that so it's nice and, and crispy. And if you want to top stitch that, by all means top stitch it. I'm not going to, but you might want to. Okay, but I'm going to pop my iron on it so it's nice and neat. So this is why now you can see why we have a longer zip than normal. So even though the, the front of pouch is about 12 inches, we've asked or I've asked you to cut 14 inches because that allows you to keep moving that slider out of the way to opening up the pouch so it's easier to stitch. So I'm, all I'm doing is bringing my edges together so I know when I press and I, or I iron, I know that all of the other pieces are in the right place. So I'm just opening that up. And again, ironing when it's open is far, far easier. So giving that a press is a really good idea. If you don't press at this stage, what will happen is when you go to open your pouch up, some of that lining fabric, because it's still kind of puffy, it'll get caught in the zip. So top stitching is good. I'm not going to. But if you give it a good iron and it's going to get caught in its own seams shortly when we stitch the lining and the outer pieces together, but it really does make a nice, neat finish. Um, and be careful that you don't have your iron on too hot with the zip teeth just there. OK, so let's just close this again. So that's how it looks. And if you want to, you could give that a press so it sits, um, you know, like gives it the shape that it needs. But by the time you stitch it together, it will get that shape. So what I mean is you can fold the back piece down and press that into a crease. I don't think it really matters. It's going to go that way anyway. There we go. But it'll help you visually now. So there we are. There's our front little piece made. Looks nice, doesn't it? So, but now we've got to stitch this all together so it does resemble some sort of pouch um, and it's just the same as if you're bag making so you're going to put right sides together of your um, pouch your outer part let's open that and also don't forget to open your zip okay <laughs> because even though we've got we've got gaps either end okay we've got we haven't put the tabs on yet but they're not big enough to turn the whole thing through so again let's get our clips clip the top two together where the little v is the notch bring down your lining both sides okay and get those little v's those notches matched up now on the pattern there's um two little dots and that's where you start and stop stitching okay you'll see that on the pattern there's a dot either side on the pattern don't think oh I have got my pattern pieces handy whoops 
lost a bit. So there we are. Can you see the little black dots? So that's where you start stitching all the way around and that's where you stop stitching. On the lining, you're still going to leave a turning gap. So on your outer fabric, you're going from there all the way around to that dot. On your lining, you're going from there about to there, leave about four inches and come back up to here. So you still need that turning gap in the lining. Okay, um, so right sides together, open your zip and then we're going to stitch. So like I said, you're going to stitch and you'll find that the front and back, they kind of, one's got a, the front has got that curve. So it'll want to move in a different way. So just sort of bring it round and tell it who's boss. And I've still got my zipper foot on. Let's take it off. Don't need it now. Hurrah. But these, these zips aren't so tricky. You mustn't get worried about. And, and the main thing is, is to give, give it a go. And if you buy, like me, if you buy zips on a roll, you'll have plenty of zippage to practice with. Unless you buy some more sliders to go with it. There's always spares. There's always spare zippage. So starting a quarter inch in, quarter inch um, out, um, so from that corner it's quarter of an inch up, quarter of an inch out, but look at the dots. And quarter inch seam allowance again. And the curves on the back are different to the curves on the front. So although I've put my clip in to match my notches, I'm actually going to take it out because I need to manoeuvre the fabric a little bit. But because we've put stabiliser on, it's not going to stretch. So your notches line up, which mine have perfectly. But it's what gives it the shape. It was what pulls it round and makes it that lovely, what do you call it, half moon shape, crescent shape. So as you come up, just match your corners up again. Remember where your notches were. Not your notches, your dots. Nice little back stitch and stop stitching. So if we look at it, you can see what that looks like. So on the lining, similar, but you're leaving a turning gap. So let's just bring that in. Nice little back stitch because you're going to still sort of manipulate that piece in just a moment. So little way around. Back stitch, leave a gap, make sure your notches are still lined up. As I say, leave about four inches. I haven't measured, it's quite a big gap, but that's fine. It's the inside. Just make sure those different curves fit together. So bring it round. And remember where those dots are stop and start so you can see there I think you can see how that looks okay so you're going to turn that through so if we can get our hand in there there we go I thought for a moment I hadn't opened the zip now if you want to you can clip that curve okay you can use your pinking shears it's revolutionary using pinking shears for cutting curves but if it's, um, it's a, if it's a deeper curve, then perhaps clip a little bit more into it. So I still have my zip up that long length of 14 inches. And I'm, I shall cut it in a second. And one end has still got a safety pin on. So I'm well aware that that's still there. So on this side where it's joined together, you'll need to push that through. Get hold of the zip. Give it a tug. There we go. Oh, one thing I meant to do was snip into those corners. Remember the corners? Bear with. Let's turn it through. So, let's turn it through. <laughs> okay. So, back to where we were. It's important. See where we stopped here? 
snip into that. And I remember when I first put this together, I did exactly the same. So snip into your corners. Be careful of your stitching and the lining as well. Okay, now we can turn through. <laughs> right, okay, so we've snipped into the corners, pushed the ends of the zip out. Okay, and like I said, it's still got the safety pin on, but we're going to cut that off in a sec. Push that lining in, you can sort that out a little bit later. You can, you've got that turning gap to neaten. Get your fingers in there and get all those curves out. That's it. Okay. So there's the front of our bag and back of our bag completed. Well, that's the little pouch section. I'm going to close that zip up a bit now because I don't need it as open as that. So bring out your ends. So your ends should come out like a sort of a, a tab on their own. Make sure that your lining and your outer fabric sit fairly neatly on top of each other. As long as you've got all the layers there, you'll be fine. And just get that lined up. And you'll find that your zip kind of goes off at an angle, which is how it gets stitched into the side pieces. And again, on this bit here, now you just want to make sure that when you do your zip up, that you don't get um, a sort of a, a, a loop. You want to make sure that it does actually zip up perfectly and nice and straight. So if we look at that on the side camera, that's how you want it to look where it's going to sit beautifully together. So you might want to stitch that there and join that zip together. I'm fairly confident that's going to stay. So I'm just going to snip across that. I'll just get my paper scissors and just snip across. And just to hold that in place, I'm just going to run that under the machine and just stay stitch that together just across there. And that's literally holding it in place. There's so many threads, let's get rid of those. Okay. And then on the other side, just get those all lined up. and just stitch across there just to hold. I'll take my safety pin out now. Can use that another time. And then we can just snip off that little bit of zip there. Okay, that's lovely. Good. So just neaten that up. So there's our pouch made. So now it's just a case of adding the tabs at either side and then adding the webbing and it's done. So I'm just sort of eyeballing that just to make sure I'm happy with how that looks. I think we need to take a little bit off here. I'm happy with that. Right, so you have two, two tabs which are cut on the fold. Okay, so all you're doing with those is turning in a quarter of an inch no, not another quarter of an inch, just a quarter of an inch and just top stitching. I'll show you in a sec what I'm top stitching. Now these uh, haven't been stabilised but you could stabilise them. I've left that for you to make that decision but at the end of the day they're going to be um, they're going to have webbing inside and the end of the pouch inside as well so it's fairly it's quite a lot of fabric and stiffness going on anyway so let me just cut off my my threads so that's how it looks 
So all you've done is stitched a quarter of an inch top and bottom and you've top stitched it to neaten. And now all I want you to do is fold that in half and stitch along that curvy edge there. So if I hold it so you can see. So we've done the top stitching, <coughs> top and bottom. And now you're just going to stitch that together. <coughs> Excuse me, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. the same on the other one and you, if you want to iron these quarter inch seam allowances down then by all means do that okay so just trim your threads guarantee you'll see them so right sides together and now you're stitching that curvy piece together down that side seam and the top part the fold is is the top so on if you look at the bag like that the fold goes on the top, okay, but we're going to turn these through. You can trim those seam allowances back if you want to. Give this a little iron if you want to. Might as well, so we've got the iron out. Just make it nice and neat. It's amazing what a difference an iron makes. Let's just trim those seams a little. And this one, just trim the seam because it does stick out a, a little bit because of the shape. Give that an iron. Okay, lovely. Let's give that another little iron, actually. There. <laughs> okay. So you're now going to, so don't forget the fold goes at the top and the wider end goes against the pouch. And I've, I've mentioned that on the pattern piece. So this wider side here goes on the pouch and your webbing fits in there. Okay, so all you're going to do is slide that on. When I say slide, you've got to feed it on. And what you want to do is kind of cover up. So you want to kind of go to the points of where you're, you finish stitching your pouch. So it goes right up to the inside of that curve or that corner and then you're just going to top stitch that in place. So just feed that on and it should be a nice snug fit. So I'm just, just going to stitch over my original stitches of my top stitching. Nice little back stitch and just keep that in place all the way across. So if I, where's my scissors here, if I show you now what that looks like. So we just do the other side, so don't forget it's that wider end goes on, so you can see how it just sort of feeds onto the end of that. Slip it over the top and just go over your original stitches. just really is a super way of neatening that uh, the ends up. Be careful of the zip there because you've got um, quite a lot of layers with the zip so just be careful. Okay lots of threads there we go so we've got both ends or both tabs applied now so one of these um, pieces is uh, uh, just long enough to go uh, so that so the buckle is just here for when you unclip it if you want to do it for a left hander obviously you're going to do this part on the left hand part of your pouch this one's going to go on the right so I need to put half of my buckle in that I can get that one open okay so <laughs> if we look at the original one So if I can do that again now, that's it. So you see this part, this end goes into the 
part nearest the pouch and this is the one that feeds in okay because that pushes in so we want it so this part goes on the short piece here so this is my little short piece so I'm just going to slide that in it's one inch I'm um, I'm not going to normally I would stitch quite near to the the buckle there I'm not going to to worry about that so I folded that in half there we go folded that in half and I'm just going to slide that into the little tabs there as far as I can put sort of push them really they don't want to be right at the quarter inch line or anything like that you want to push them in so they meet the end of the bag you know the pouch and then you're just going to top stitch that in place so a nice little back stitch don't forget this is going to take quite a bit of pressure so you might want to go over it a couple of times just to give it a, a nice bit of strength so there's our one half of the buckle in place so now we want to do the other part and it's this is just the same procedure as if we were making a bag now so I've got my my silver slider and like I say you can get plastic ones I'm not sure they are strong enough I'm, not, I'm really not sure but um, I do like my metal ones I, I know where I am with them so you're just going to feed it up through that center or between the center um, divider and bring it back on itself if I can manage to do that um, you might want to zigzag the ends if you're using webbing you might want to zigzag the ends because they it does fray but you could use glue as well so all you're going all you've done is all I've done is I've taken it over about I don't know inch and a half and that's attached if I show you the side it's attached the slider and that silver divider is is through the loop so it's folded back on itself there we go and you see how that looks okay so I'm just going to stitch that in place I'll do it so I can see it and again this wants to be quite strong so I'm just going over it twice and get it lined up okay so when we put the slider on if I show you from the side view it might be easier so you've attached your slider there and you fold it over the end and you top stitch that across and hopefully you can see that it's quite dark I know and then if you follow the line of that so if I bring that across and follow the line then here is your buckle so you're going in and then out and then when you fold that back the buckle actually sits nicely nice and flat that's how you want it to look okay that's how you want it to look and then all you do then is feed the end through the slider so up one side and through the other okay so that's what it looks like if we pull that pull that out and then you can adjust obviously so let's just adjust that so now it's nice and long so this end it's just neaten that off a little bit because it's been it's frayed because we've been feeding it through so making sure that it's the right way up so you, I've got this at the moment I've got the right side facing down on my desk I've got the right side of my bag in front of me and I'm going to feed that webbing right to the end where the bag meets the webbing basically I'm going to push that in until it meets so let's just do that and you can overlap it if you like just to make sure that it's sitting nicely there we go I'm happy with that now push that right in and while it's there get it in position and top stitch of times just to hold it there. so that's now you can see the webbing is beautifully encased in that tab and then if we bring the strap around you'll be able to see that it fits perfectly and there we are as long as we haven't got it twisted now we're fine <laughs> 
so there we are that's how it looks it's, it's hard to see with black i know but i kind of made it for me really and it's shiny it's got foiling so that is our janet and it's absolutely lovely it's one of those additions that you can have around the home like i will certainly wear janet around the home with my mobile phone in when i don't have any pockets but also for when you're traveling when you're you know out and about and you're hopefully be going in trains planes and automobiles where you can have your little bits and pieces in there maybe some cash in there maybe your phone or your bits and pieces that you can travel around with you and you know it's really safe because it's attached to you so that is janet so we've made janet with let's get the bits out of the way we've made janet in canvas so you've got that sort of effect it's nice and sturdy and strong and of course you can fussy cut uh, if you want to you could make it in tweed and make it um, perhaps in faux leather for the perhaps the more male version might be better or you can make it really super fancy in some foiled fabric and make it really maybe for an evening out maybe so there we are so that's janet janet is a download on my website lizzycurtis.com and i hope you make loads